Welcome to the Canada Free Will Baptist Church. Uh, we are thankful that you've uh, taken this opportunity to join us. Uh, we are at our Wednesday night Bible study, and as we start into the service today, we'll have a few special songs. But if you've got a need in your life, uh, I have, we ask that you actually uh, uh, respond. Uh, we have people in the comments and stuff. Let us know what you, your needs are and let us help you pray. Uh, if you need a, 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 to contact us, I'm sure that the phone number is present on the on the page. Uh, be much in prayer for the service, and we just want to uh, invite you to come in and be part of our service with you here today. Uh, so anybody got a song or a testimony on their heart that they'd like to give for the glory of God? I uh, um, Boo been practicing. And, uh, well, I, oh, that's it. They've done called you out, brother. Boo, see, be much in prayer for Rodney, right? They come. say I love the Lord tonight. Great to be here. Uh, sing to that. That just says it. You see me and see, you know it. All right. I never made a fortune. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> It's probably too late now Oh, but I don't worry about that much Cause I'm happy anyhow As I go along life's journey Reaping better than I saw. I'm drinking from my saucer. Cause my cup has overflowed. I ain't got a lot of riches. Sometimes the going's rough But I got a friend in Jesus And that makes me rich enough Oh, I thank God for all His blessings And the mercies he's bestowed. I'm drinking from my saucer. Cause my cup has overflowed. And if I should go on living. If the way gets steep and rough oh, I won't ask for all the blessings Cause I'm already blessed enough May I never be too busy Help another bear his load And I'll keep drinking from my sauce, Lord 
Cause my cup has overflowed So I'll keep drinking from my sauce alone Cause my cup has overflowed My cup has Now, Brett's going to get on to me because, number one, this thing ain't wired up, right? <laughs> Hold on. Brett's going to get all over because he keeps telling me all the time, he said, son, they can't hear that guitar that's online. Usually, that's usually mine and nobody wants to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why we don't get that one wired up. Which one is it? It says two. He's been wanting me to sing this song for a while, and it's just a personal song for me that I sing at home, and I do not have it down, but it, just listen to the words. Yeah, I'll practice on you, okay? You ask me how it is that I'm still standing how I made it through this storm I can boast of any special power There's no secret I just held on And I held on Till the storm was over I don't have all the answers I held on till the storm was over not because I'm good not because I'm great not because I'm strong I held on can tell that things are finally happening I got blessings I can call my own Many times I wondered if I would make it But while I was wondering I just held on And I, I held on the storm was over I don't claim to be a hero and 
and worship song that we do at the house. You know, there's times that we just don't understand. <clears throat> and we're waiting for the movement of the Spirit. We're wanting God to step in. And sometimes we want Him to step in right now. Sometimes, Jerry, you just have to hang on. He, the, the command has already been given the angels dispatched already from the throne of God and it's already in the process but it might not be as fast as what we think it should. Hang on. Don't give up on what he's going to do because he that begun a great work in our life, he says he is able to finish it. It's not on anything that we can do but what Christ can do inside of us. That this word of truth will be declared in this day that in our weakness is when his strength is made perfect today. So they brought the prayer cloth or the blanket over, and we're going to have an anointing service. Those of you that are joining us online, what's happening? There's a need in a life in a little child, Tegan Williamson. And right now, we're going to anoint this prayer blanket to send down there to that family so that they, that anointing can be on that family. Not that there's anything in the oil, not that there's anything in this blanket today. But it's in the power and the belief that we got in the one who's able to complete and do what we can't do. That the name of Jesus be glorified. So all those of you that's got a need in your life, if you've got uh, an anointing on your life you need, as we stated before, I want you to all the elders of the church come up and let's join around and let's pray over this blanket. As a matter of fact, if you, as a mother, you want to come, I think we all need to come up today and have this anointing service because all of us have been touched and all of us have experienced that type of miracle and move in our life today.
Anybody else got a, a, a testimony or a song on their heart that they want to give for the glory of God? Anybody got anything on their heart and mind? Anybody else today got something? We probably gone about ten or fifteen minutes. We can do some Bible study. We got a short business meeting to cover after this. Uh, I think Roger left us a note, didn't he, Brett? We're somehow we went from Exodus over to First John. Yeah, that's what I thought he said in chapter one ver, uh, of First John. That's so if you guys are listening, tuning in online, we are actually picking up our study from last week. Roger has taken us over into 1 John, uh, and we'll be starting picking up at the 7th verse. Now, when you start looking at 1 John in the outline, and there's no doubt that he's actually uh, covered what John the Beloved was his message. This is an individual letter that's being written back that captures a lot of interesting facts with it. And as we lead up to it, it, it's leading us into the confessions that we need. Now, I like how Jack says it all the time. Our pastor told us that, you know, I don't need to know everything. I mean, you need to confess your faults unto Jesus and allow him to deal with it. I probably don't because I'm human. There are certain things that I may not be able to forget, right? Jesus can forget it. So we need to look to him and understand what this process actually is. So it talks about as we lead into it in the fellowship, backing up to number six, he told us we left off at seven, but just as a prelude, 
Let me back up to number five, and it just sort of leads into it. It says, this, I, this then is the, is the message which we have heard of him, which is Jesus saying, declaring to you that God is light. And it says, in him is no darkness at all. Sometimes, Andy, we have to go back and understand, number one, who he actually is. Because as we look at our, the human nature and humanity, because there's dark spots in us doesn't mean that there's any darkness in him. He is true 100% light. If you think about Moses when he was actually on the mountain and his presence, he absorbed that light of who God actually was so much so that when he come down off the mountain, they could not look upon him for the brightness of his features. They literally had to put a veil over his face so that he could communicate with them. And as we see that there's no darkness in him, and if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, he said we actually lie and do not the truth. Now there's people today that they proclaim to be Christians, but their whole lifestyle is in question to the faith that they say they have. But the Bible goes on to tell us, boo, that number one, if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. And what that actually means is allow the Spirit to see inside of us. Step to the light and allow Him to reveal where we're at. And it leads up into how we deal with the imperfections that we have. Because we was born into this world. We was conceived in iniquity and in sin. Born into sin. So how do we deal with it? And that's what we're leading up to. But he goes on to say, but if we walk in the light... As he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. Think about what he's telling us here. He said, and because we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son will cleanse us from all our sins. For the, When you think about the two commandments that whenever the lawyer come to Jesus and he asked him, he said, we know you're a teacher of God, but what is the greatest commandment of all? Jesus goes right back and quotes Deuteronomy. And he said, hear ye, O Israel, the Lord your God is one God. One. He ain't divided. He said, in him only shalt thou serve. To love with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. He, that is the number one law. And, but he goes on to continuation and he says, but to sack it, he said, is to love your neighbor as yourself. On these, hold it all. And the lawyer, which could rightly divide it, was astounded. He said, rightly so, for on these to hang every one of the law and the statutes of God. The prophets, every bit is up. So here we see that as we are in the light, that we have fellowship one with another. Now, I wonder why John backed up and said, Instead of it fellowship with God, he is relating it to one another. That's because he, he goes on to say, how can you say that you love God in whom you haven't seen if you can't love your brother or sister whom you have seen? Love knows no ill. It won't do no harm. right? It doesn't want to see you falter or fail. It doesn't take joy in something that it bad happens to you, but it's heartbroken. It wants to see you succeed and grow and continue to move on. So when we start looking at what he's telling us here, he's showing us that if we start judging ourselves and looking at our, we know where we stand. There's no use in us looking at other people thinking, well, I, I'm pretty good beside Jerry. I see some of the things he does. Well, I, there's a few things I need to do a little better, but for the most part, I'm pretty good. But that's not what he's wanting us to judge ourselves by. He's wanting us to see the, the path and the life of who Christ is. And by that statue that Christ lived, have we measured up to it? And I hate to say, but we haven't. The only way that we can ever get to that point is like he told Nicodemus. He said, Nicodemus, you must be born again. 
You cannot please God in this flesh. For the flesh, the carnal side, is, an, is actually an enemy with God. But in the spirit, being born into Christ and by that blood, we are able to purge us and cleanse us, the Bible says, from all unrighteousness. In that and all, man, it should make you shout. Boo, that that is no more going to drag you down. It is no more going to cripple you. It's going it's to give you something that right in the middle of temptation, you're able to have that spirit that says, I don't know how I was able to love when it was right in front of me, but yet I was able to look beyond everything that's going on and I was able to love you with no reservation to it. But he goes on to say, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So if we back up, too many times you will see that we will try to make an excuse for what we've done. Well, I probably wasn't done. I know it was bad, but yet, well, it was because this happens, the reason I've done that. And in God's eyes, he is not looking for you to make an excuse. The Bible says that he once winked at our ignorance. But in this day right now has left us, Brother Booth, what? Without an excuse. For it says the grace of God. In other words, his unmerited favor has been revealed to all humanity. It doesn't matter who you can point out in today. That grace of God, before he ever draws his last breath, will be revealed to them. The message is being broadcast on a large scale. And you wonder, why? Why ain't people listening to it? That's because their testimony, the reason I was 29 years old before I stepped into the light, is because my testimony was against me. That I love darkness rather than light. So I need to remember where I stand. Now, it's, it's not just that I'm going to have a better lifestyle. Because I can read nothing in here that when I give my life to the Lord that I'm exempted from any kind of trial that I'm going to go through. That it's going to be a, a lifestyle of prosperity. It's going to be a bed of roses. And everything's going to be in tranquility. It ain't there we're, because we're still in a war in this flesh. The Apostle Paul talks about that war. But as we move into this light, we can see that God is showing us a better way that he can allow to have a perfect work that we can see where we stand. And that's what he's talking about right here. If I say that I am, I don't have no sin, I've lied, I've lied to myself. Do you think it's possible that if you repeat a lie over and over enough, you'll get to the point to where it's believable? Sure you can if you repeat it over and over and over enough, but just because you think it's so, is it really so? Does it hold water? No. And when you know the truth, and that's what he's talking about here, once you understand these facts and you start walking in the light of the gospel truth, that you'll see that there is no way that you could ever stand and say, well, I'm justified in what I do. I deserve this. Well, I, I've done all this stuff to the church. I, they deserve to treat me better now. Listen to me. It, that, that can't happen. We don't have a church. We are the church. Christ is the church. He bought it. He's the head. I ain't nothing. I am a part of the body of Christ. So why would I ever think that I am not. I am something that I'm not. So he goes on to say right here. Now this is how where it comes down to it. He said, "But if we confess our sins, here is the plan of salvation. This is what will deliver you." He said, "But if we confess our sins, He, meaning Jesus, is faithful 
And it's hard for us to realize what faithful is until we understand that we're living in a faithless generation. I know, I'm moving. I've got six minutes. I need to get, I, I got to get to this. You don't realize. We, but he says, that he, he said, he is just and, and to forgive us of our sins. So if he is, if we confess our sins, and he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But it starts as if we confess. Where was the problem at, boo? Where was the problem at? That's the money. It doesn't matter what we're planning to do right now. It doesn't matter what is on tomorrow or what we're planning to do in an hour from now. Right now, if we confess our sins, he is faithful. He is just and able to cleanse us. What more do we need, boo? He's the one today. That is what it's about. That's the whole reason that he came and bore our flesh today. And so, Jack, when you got a burden for Kerrigan, he said, I'm just unable to do that. I will, I am faithful to everything that your needs can possibly be. I need you to be faithful to me. I need you to, number one, confess what you can't do. The Apostle Paul, he prayed three times earnestly. He was confessing it. Until Jesus came to him and told him that in his weakness is when his strength is made perfect. His eyes in the Old Testament says it's looking throughout all the earth to and fro those that are weak that he can show his great strength in. For the word says, I resist the proud. You are not going to come to him with a proud heart thinking that you deserve it. It ain't going to happen. But when we come to him, and that broken heart. And we come to him with that contrite spirit. In other words, you are truly sorry when you realize not what everybody else is doing, not what society's doing. What is the Spirit of God telling you right now? You already know. There is no deny. I couldn't deny it. I don't care how much justification I tried to do, I was still guilty. But he said that if I would confess my sins, He's faithful and just to forgive. Then number 10 says, and if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. There is a point that it says that my spirit, this is his words before the flood came and he's saying that every man's hearts were continually evil and he said, my spirit will not always strive with man. We think he's always loving. We think it, it will always be there. Listen, there, there'll come a time, and I have experienced in my walk that I could not feel the drawing power of God anymore. At 29, I was raised in church, had the drug problem, going from one church to the next, knew the songs, not just how they went. I, I could hear the back of it because I heard all of it. Knew the church services inside out but was as lost as lost could be. I finally got to the point to where I no longer could feel the drawing power of God. And that was a scary place because I already knew that there would come a point. He said, I will not always strive with you. Go read the book of Romans. And he says three times, he said, for this cause, I turned them over. For this cause, I gave them up. Because they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, he said, I turned them over to a reprobate mind. These are serious things. And it's time that we understand who he is. Why it's important that we confess our faults. And I know I probably said it for him, kept going on and on and on. Shelly told me, warned me about that. She said, hey, you, could, you just keep going and you're excited. You, you don't give anybody a chance to talk. Well, I, I know what I can't help it. Today, I... I want to ask you today as you're listening to this message and you're going through this study with us, go back and read it. He's faithful. God loves you so much that he gave heaven's best. Not that we would slip and fall. Not that he's back there going to condemn us. But he loves you so much 
that he has made a way that while I was yet in my sins, Christ died for me. And he said, if you want to live, he said, try me. Confess to me. Understand where you're at. And I'm, he said, I'll save you right where you're at today. So if you have accepted Christ in your life, by all means, let us know. I've got the baptistry. It's full of water. We'll come over and we'll baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And you'll be, not that the water or baptism will do anything for you, but I need you to know that that is an open confession to the world showing the death and the burial and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we've died out to our old ways and that we're resurrected to walk in the newness of life. Does it say we're perfect? No. But I can tell you one thing. I'm perfectly saved because it's nothing on me, but it's all about what he done. If you're looking at me and I mess up, I own that. That's on my part. But if you see any good in me, it's the Lord Jesus Christ. We love you. Be our prayer. Be with you. God bless you. As we come to a close this service today, uh, we are getting ready to go into our business portion.